What's your name again, sis? What's your name again? Lorna. Lorna. I'm Tazawan, okay? What I want to show you is, uh, let me ask you something real quick. Do you want to get to the kingdom of heaven? Matthew 19, 16. Sis, do you want to get to the kingdom of heaven? I'm sure you do. Okay. All praises, because we do too. But we're going to go by how the Bible says how you get to the kingdom of heaven. You understand? So there's, a, there's certain things that our people may not be aware of in the scriptures, all right? That's why we out here, we're teaching to our people and the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians that we have to come back to what God is saying in the Bible, all right? Because that's why we have a lot of troubles in our community because we have yet to appear what God wants us to do, you understand? So real quick, read this. I'm gonna show you how to get to the kingdom of heaven, okay? All right. Read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him. So a man in the hymn is speaking of Christ. A man came to Christ and asked him a question, right? Like we all do. We go to people of understanding and we seek to get an answer from the Bible. That's why we have pastors in our community, correct? Read on, come on. Good master. What? Good master. A man called Christ good master. You understand? Read. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So the man asked Christ, which is our question that should be asked to any man that has the Bible. He asked him, how do you get eternal life? Because you don't want to die, do you? When your body goes to the earth and your soul is up, uh, carries on, do you want to go to hell or do you want to go to heaven? So you want to live forever, correct? Okay, so here we go. When your body dies, where are we going to go? That's what he was asking. Read on. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? Christ said, why call me good? A black man that looked just like you and I. Christ was a black man. He looked like us. I don't know if you know that or not, but that's very important that you know that. Because it got to be important that they put him as in white. Right. You understand? Right. But when you read actually in the Bible, it describes Christ's skin as by a burnt brass, all right, as if it burned in a furnace, meaning he was very dark skinned. That's important. Why? Because there's power in image. You understand? Right. Read on. Come on. There is none good but one. There is only one good on the earth. Who is that? That is God. I'm sorry to tell y'all, and I'm glad to say it. God is black. Right, right. God is a black man. That's right. The creator of earth is a black man. Christ is a black man. Eve was black. Adam was black. Joseph and Mary was black. Moses was black. Christ is black. The people of the Bible are black. They are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. In 2017, you got to wake up and know that information. Why? Because it's very important. Guess what, sister? You are royalty on earth, but you have yet to know that. We are royalty on earth, but they call us niggas, coons, and spicks right. like we're less than nothing right. as a nation. That's why it's important to know who you are, because we don't know who we are. Right we have taken the name of a slave, of a slave master. Look at your last names. Where do you get your last names from? You are nothing but slave property. Right. From right. your Jenkins, your Johnsons, your Hickens, your Jacksons, all of that. You were slave property. Right. But what was your original name? God called you Israel. Yeah. That's your true name. So, sister, the steps to you getting the kingdom of heaven is you got to know who the kingdom of heaven is for. The kingdom of heaven is only for the Israelites. Right. It's only for you. So how do you get there? Christ is going to explain. Read. But if thou will enter into light. But if you want to get eternal life, we ain't going to sugarcoat it. We ain't going to give you our own opinion. We're going to give you an answer on how you get to the kingdom of heaven and live forever. Right. What's the answer? Read. Keep the commandment. How do you get to the kingdom of heaven? Keep the commandment. How do you get to the kingdom of heaven? Keep the commandment. How do you escape death? Keep the commandment. How do you escape hell on earth? Read. Keep the commandment. Now, I'm going to go to the very last book of the Bible, and I'm going to read it to you. The conclusion of the whole Bible, what it says in Revelation 22 real quick. Bring it so that you know we ain't speaking no other words or doctrines. We read it in the New Testament, brothers and sisters. Right. If you think you're living all right here in America, selling your weed, selling your dope, destroying your people, women in pants, brothers in dresses, right. homosexuality, which the Bible calls sodomy, guess what? America has taught you an evil lesson in America. It is not okay to destroy your people and, and smoke weed and cigarettes and drink and get drunk in your communities. Right. That's what the white man wants you to do. He wants you to kill yourself. Right. He wants you to get caught up into BET and sports. Right. He wants you to get caught up into selling drugs and uh, getting caught up in rims, money, cars, and clothes right. and hoes. That's what y'all care about nowadays. Right. We don't care about taking care of
care of our community. But that's what's going to change right now in the eyesight of you brothers and sisters now. You're going to realize that God's prophets are here on earth and that you're going to change your ways. If you do not want to repent, you're going to die. Plain and simple. God ain't playing no games no more with you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. You must repent in order to receive the kingdom of heaven. How do you repent? You keep God's commandments. You change your American ways, your sodomitish ways, your heathenistic ways, and you keep God's commandments. That's the only way to save you in the communities from a Black Lives Matter movement. To hell with that movement, it's destroying our people. Right. It's not saving us. How long have we been marching and we still dealing with thefts and murder in the community? Right. You crying about one white man killing a black man, but we kill each other every day. Right. We are hypocrites as a people. Wake up. How do you receive the kingdom of heaven? The Bible is going to explain. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed. What? Blessed. We don't know as a people what it means to be blessed. We think just because we got a nice car with rims, a nice house, that's blessed. No, that's vanity. Lord can care less about what you have or what money you give into the church. We don't need your money at that. God wants to see what you're doing to receive the kingdom of heaven. As the prophets taught in the days of ancient times in Christ, so we teach it today. You need to save your soul. How do you do that? Keep God's commandments. What does it mean to be blessed? Read. Blessed are they that do his commandments. God's looking at your actions. God said, blessed are you that do his commandments. Blessed are you that do his commandments. How do you receive the kingdom of heaven? You keep God's commandments. How do you be blessed of God? You keep God's commandments. Read on. That they might have right to the tree of life. That's the only way you're going to have right to God's tree of eternal life. Is if you keep God's commandments. To be blessed in the community, you do what the Bible tells you to do. Right. Read on, come on. And may enter and through the gates into the city. Hey, sister, come here real quick. So what I'm going to do right now, I ain't veered off from you, excuse me. I had to stress that to the people. Listen, I'm going to show you some commandments that you got to keep. And I'm going to show you some love, because that's what it is. I love you. I don't know you, but in God's eyes, I love you eternally. You understand? I'm going to show you love according to the Bible. Let's get some love real quick. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. I want the dietary law. I want the law of hatred. We're teaching you God's commandments and laws. This is how you rebuild and restore a community with God's laws, his love. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. The woman. The what? The woman. The royal and righteous Israelite woman, like you are, you understand? The royalty, the royal woman, the queen, all right? The princesses, you, uh, you understand? Read on, come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So as royalty and kings and priests and kings and uh, queens, there's a dress code that a queen wears. You understand? Right. There's a dress code that a king wears. Your royalty. Right. God said, I want a man to not wear that which pertaineth unto a woman. Right. And I want a woman to not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right. Because a woman and a man in a kingdom, in a relationship, in a community, plays a, a specific role. Right. The man is the provider. Right. He's the protector of the family. Right. The woman is the supporter of that. She takes care and raises up the kids. You understand? She's a very important role. We need our sisters. We need our righteous women. But we need you to be righteous. We don't just need you because you're here. We need you to be righteous. And the men need to step up and be righteous men. You understand? It's not just y'all. It's us too. That's what builds and heals and helps the community. So, God said... God said that starts with your appearance. You understand? So what does it say? Read it again. The woman. The woman. That's you, sis. Read. Shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now I have a question to ask you. All praise. You know what, sister? Listen. You acknowledge that. Don't be like, oh, damn. That's a good thing that you acknowledge that. You know what happens now? Now you have grace to repent from that. Right. And that's not a burden for you. Because, look, God is explaining it to you plain. This is how, I, this is how you show that you love me. 
if you keep my commandments. You got to weigh that out in your own life and situation. You understand? But from the time being, you know where your relationship is with God. We're reading it out of the Bible. It says, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, meaning pants, shorts, anything that a man wears, even his shoes. Why? Because the spirit of what's in that clothing is for the man. You understand? If, if, I, if you see me right now wearing a dress, would you think something was normal with me? No. Naturally, no. All right? But America tries to promote as if that's normal. You understand? But naturally, in your day and in my times when I was coming up, that wasn't normal. Nowadays, they try to diagnose that as normal, or they try to they try to close it and say it was a sickness for a man and a woman to have dip, to have the opposite spirits. You understand what I'm saying? And that sets confusion in the community. Right. Meanwhile, you have two men talking about one is two husbands raising up children in the community. Right. God said, "Be fruitful and multiply." You understand? You can't multiply with the same sex. Right. That's against God. Right. You understand? How can you prosper and procreate with the same sex. Right. You understand? So that shows you what land that you're living in. We're living in the place of hell. We are living in hell. Right. So read that again. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So sister, you're not supposed to be in pants, all right? You got time to fix that. Grace is upon you right now. But you know you owe God righteousness. Read on. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And if you see a man in a woman's garment, meaning a dress, it's against God's law. It's not natural. God says he's against that, okay? Zephaniah 1 verse 8, real quick. Come on. I'm going to show you because what I'm trying to do is show you that you should fear God and his judgments. I don't want to die. But if you continue in sin, he's going to let you sin, sin, sin until your, your day of judgment is set. For you continuing to wear them pants. Right. For you continuing for a man to wear a dress. Right. God said it's against a man to wear dresses. God said it's against a woman to put on pants. Right, right it's confusion. Up. It's cross-dressing. Right. Okay? Plain and simple. As royalty, you're supposed to dress royal, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. What are we doing? We are teaching the love of the Bible. We are teaching God's commandments. This is how you receive the kingdom of heaven. Your churches have failed you, but the prophets will not. Right. Right. Read. Come on. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. So, sis, this is the judgment for that, okay? Read. Come on. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. God sacrifices his day of judgment, of his day of righteous judgment, when he returns here on earth. All right, read. Come on. That I will punish the princes. He said he going to punish the princes. Who are the princes? You're looking at the princes. He said, I'm going to punish the princes on a particular situation. Read on. And the king's children. And the king's children. We are the king's children. All right? Because we're royalty. You understand? Read. Come on. And all such are as are clothed with strange apparel. So hold on. You mean to tell me that in the book of Zephaniah, in the Bible, in the King James Version Bible, in chapter 1, verse 8, it said that God is going to judge me for wearing strange apparel. What is that strange apparel? God set up the right apparel in the beginning. He said a woman is supposed to wear a dress and a man is supposed to wear pants. Right. If it's switched, guess what? That's strange apparel. That's right. So God said he's going to judge those that's wearing strange apparel. You understand? Apparel that he did not approve. You understand? You get what I'm trying to say, sis? So you got to keep that law. Let's get the law on the pork, what you should eat. Not only that, but when you read the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38, on your clothing, you're supposed to have these right here. Look up here real quick, sis. Fringes. This is a part of your culture, a part of your heritage. The fringes remind you of the commandments. Each fringe is a commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as I love thyself. Don't set no other gods before the Most High God. Know that you're an Israelite. That's a commandment. You understand? What else? Uh, we have uh, the laws of the Sabbath day. The laws of our celebrations that God gave, that God ordained uh, holidays for lack of better words. We call them high holy days. God gave us celebrations throughout the year to keep. The Passover. The Feast of Pentecost. You understand what I'm saying? The memorial blowing trumpets. The new moons. The Sabbath days. The Feast of Tabernacles. These are celebrations that God ordained. God never ordained Christmas. Right. God never ordained Christmas. Right. God never ordained Valentine's Day or Halloween. Right. God never ordained New Year's Eve. Right. You learned that in slavery. You learned that from your slave master. God never ordained Thanksgiving. They don't keep Thanksgiving in Jerusalem right now. 
It, it was never prophesied in the Bible of Thanksgiving. Right. You keep the customs of the white man, the devil, on this on this earth. Right. Read that. Come on. The laws of God. This is how you get to the kingdom. So there was a man that asked Christ a question. How do you receive eternal life? And he gave him an answer. Keep my commandments. So now what we're going to do is go beyond that and show you the commandments that you keep to get to the kingdom. You understand? Read. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 4. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud and of them that divide up the hoof. Verse 7. And the swine. The what? And the swine. The swine is an old ancient word for the pig. All right? Come on. Though he divide up the hoof. Mind you, these laws of God are not done away with. Christ never ate pork. Christ never kept a Christmas. Right. Christ never kept a Thanksgiving. Right. So that should show you that these things, if we are followers of Christ, these things were made up of men. Right. Of men. Plain and simple. So we have to get out of the system of America because they do that for money. Right. Right. Just think if a whole community of so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians stopped celebrating Christmas. How would, how would that empower our communities with the money that we have? Bring it out. That's what I'm talking about. That's what the Bible is speaking of. Get out of America. Get out of the ways of this system and come back to God. They don't want God. They want their own God, which is what they celebrate on Christmas and Thanksgiving. We are here to keep God's commandments. Brother, you listening? We teaching in the Bible that according to the scriptures, in slavery we was called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. We're teaching the truth in the Bible. God said in the last days, I'm going to show you my prophets. I'm going to show you the true teachers. You looking at them. Brother, that look just like you. Your enemy, the white man that enslaved you, that taught you Christianity, ain't going to give you a good word to save your soul. But God will raise up his people to show you exactly what you need to do. I know, God. Deep. I'm so deep. I believe in you, God. I'll praise it to the most high, brother. Yeah. So what I'm sharing to the sister is the point of what we're teaching is how to get our people to the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, it's keeping right. God's commandments, all right, sister? Right so let's get to the kingdom of heaven by right. teaching the laws real quick. Come on with the law of uh, pork. Come on. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And the swan. And the what? And the swan. The pig. What about it? Though he divideth the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he is, yet he cheweth the, not the cud. So the Lord is explaining the characteristics of the swine. It divideth the hoof, meaning it's cloven footed, all right? Though it divide a hoof like a cow, right? But it don't chew the cud. The cud is what it makes, a, a cow regurgitates food, all right? It, it digests it the right way, it comes out, it makes it pure. A cow, you look at the, you look at the cow's teeth, it, it, it eats the vegetation off the land. It don't eat, it's not a predator, you understand what I'm saying? So, for lack of better words, the cow is good to eat, but the pig, look on the farm. They use a pig to keep, to clean up the, uh, the filth and the feces of the other animals, to keep the, um, the economics, I guess that's what it's called, or the uh, ecosystem of the, uh, Farm running well, okay? You understand what I'm saying? So in a nutshell, God created the pig for good. For the good of the animal. It's a purpose here on earth, but not for you to eat. You understand? Right. Read on, come on. He is unclean to you. The pig is good and created of God, but it's unclean for you to eat. What creature on earth would you say God is, 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 is an evil animal to make? The pig is good, but it's not good for you to eat. God created it. The pig is good. It serves its purpose. You understand? God said it's not, the, not for the purpose of you eating it. Read on. Come on. Of their flesh. Of their flesh. What's the flesh? The hog mogs, the pork. All right? The chitlins. The chicharron that you so-called Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters eat. The bacon. The bacon backs. The baby back ribs. God said you can't eat it. Why? Because you're royalty. Right. You're not Haitian. You're, you're, you're from the tribe of Levi. Right. God never called you Haitian. Right. God never gave you that culture. Voodoo is not a culture. Voodoo is witchcraft. It's of the devil in the Bible. That's, right. That's not a culture. You so-called Haitians are not Haitian. God said you are the nation of Israel, right. of the tribe of Levi. That's, right. That's your true God-given name. God never called a man on earth Haitian. Right. So keep reading real quick. You are not to eat pork. Why? Because you're royalty. You are holy to God. Read on. Come on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Uh -huh. 
and their carcass shall ye not touch. You shall not even touch the carcass. So what do our people do in the churches? They get there, they cut it up in the church. They eat the pork in the church, and they say, God is good and there's nothing to be refused. They do not understand the scriptures. They do not understand stand the scriptures. The pastor will tell you that God sanctified the pig. No, Christ never ate pork. Christ never ate pork. Nor did he do away with that law. Your pastors have lied to you. And God is trying to show you openly right now in your face that you've erred in your ways. And you need to come back in the spirit of love and keep his commandments. This is the only way to save your soul is to keep God's commandments. Hello, I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.